Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how to get fractions in simplest form. Here's our standard. Here's our learning goal, which says that I can simplify fractions by determining the common factors of the numerator and the denominator. Let's get started together. Before we do, it's important to note that when we're trying to put a fraction in simplest form, we're going to have to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get the fraction as low or as small as it can possibly go. To do that, we have to list the factors of both the numerator and the denominator to see what they have in common. Remember that our factors um, are the numbers that make up the number, that multiply together to make up the number that we're trying to get. Let's start with 6. We know that 1 and 6 will give you 6, and we also know that 2 and 3 will give you 6. Those are our factors for 6. Let's list the factors for 20. We know that 1 and 20 give us 20. We know that 2 and 10 will give us 20. And we also know that 4 and 5 will multiply together to give us 20. We now have to take a look at all of our factors and we want to choose the biggest one that they have in common. For us on this one, they only have one number in common, which is 2. So easy enough for us to decide on. Once we have our greatest common factor, our factor that's the biggest that they share, we have to divide both our numerator and our denominator by that number. Our number is 2. Let's go ahead and start with 6. When we say what is 6 divided by 2, that's a basic math fact that we know is 3. Or we can think about what times 2 gives me 6, which is 3. We have our numerator. We have to do the same thing for 20. Remember that we're working with 2. 20 divided by 2 gives me what? When we wrote out our factors, remember we said that 2 times 10 gives me 20. So 20 divided by 2 will give me 10. We have our fraction in simplest form. You can always take a look at your fraction that you have written when you think you have it as low as it can go. We have 3 tenths. Can that go any lower? Is there any number that can go into both 3 and 10? No, there's not. So we know we have it in simplest form. Let's take a look at 12 fifteenths. Again, we're going to list our factors for 12 and also for 15. Let's think of the numbers that multiply together to give me 12. We know we have 1 and 12. We know we have 2 and 6. And we also know that we have 3 and 4, which will multiply together to give you 12. Let's take a look at 15. We know that 1 times 15 gives us 15. We know that 3 times 5 gives us 15. And that's it. Let's take a look. What factors do they have in common? What's the biggest one? Well, we know that they have 1 in common. We see that they have 3 in common. We want to pick the biggest number. Our biggest factor that they share is 3. So we're going to, again, divide both our numerator and our denominator by 3. Let's start with 12. 12 divided by 3 is a math fact that hopefully we can recall is 4. If we can't, you can always think about it in terms of multiplication. 3 times what gives me 4? Let's move down to 15. 15 divided by 3. Some of us will be able to recall that math fact, which is 5. If we can't, remember, you can always ask yourself in terms of multiplication since they are inverse operations. 15, I'm sorry, 3 times what gives me 15, which is 5. Let's take a look at what we think our simplest uh, f fraction for 12 15 says. We have 4 fifths. Is there a number that can go into both 4 and 5 that will make it go any lower? No. So we have our fraction of 12 15 in simplest form. Let's try one last one together, 14 28 Again, we're going to list the factors of both 14 and 28. All the numbers that multiply together to give me the answer I'm looking for. What numbers multiply together to give me 14? We know we have 1 times 14 will give me 14. And we also know that 2 times 7 will give me 14. Let's take a look at 28. We know that 1 times 28 will give me 28. 
we can figure out that 2 times 14 will give me 28. And we also can figure out that 4 times 7 will multiply together to give me 28. Let's take a look and circle the factors that they have in common. They have 1 in common. They have 2 in common. They have 7 in common. And they also have 14 in common. Remember that when we want it to be in simplest form, we're going to choose the greatest or the largest factor to divide our numerator and denominator by. Our biggest factor is 14, so we're going to divide both our numerator and denominator by 14. Let's start with the top. 14 divided by 14 we know is 1. And then 28 divided by 14, remember when we were listing our factors, 14 times 2 gave me 28. So 28 divided by 14 is 2. We have 14 28s in simplest form, which is 1 half. You're going to try to put 6 ninths in simplest form, 12 thirtieths in simplest form, and also 15 fortieths in simplest form. Good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.